so I was put on the pill when I was 15 um, because I had really painful irregular periods like to the point where I'd miss school because I was at home vomiting I was on the pill until I was 22 um, and I decided to come off of it and I noticed that I felt a lot better like emotionally <laughs> six months went by and I still hadn't gotten my period so I thought oh that's a bit strange so I just called my doctor and, and she just said to me it sounds like you have polycystic ovary syndrome and I just said what's that <laughs> I've never heard of that before Rachel Abbott's experience with polycystic ovary syndrome or PCOS is not unique it's a condition that affects one in ten women of childbearing age and many women never even receive a diagnosis. I think I would feel a lot worse if I didn't seek the right medical advice because I went to specialists, two different specialists. But if, if I was in a different position and if I had just seen my GP, I think it would be completely different because she didn't really do the best job. Like she gave me the wrong blood test. So then I had to redo a blood test and for a little bit, there was a little bit of hope for me that I wouldn't have it. And then I got told by the specialist that I did have it and that it was very bad. PCOS is a complex hormonal condition that affects the growth of eggs in the ovaries. The eggs often don't reach maturity, which means they stay in the ovaries, causing them to become cysts. Dr. Teresa Larkin is a senior lecturer in medical sciences at the University of Wollongong and says that much is still not known about the syndrome. Unfortunately, there's been a history of reduced scientific research into female issues and reproductive issues. It is a really complicated syndrome and so I guess a part of it is the fact that it's called a syndrome, so polycystic ovarian syndrome, and that means that there's a multitude of different factors and, and symptoms. Mm -hmm. So they know that there are three main features and that's that a female will have hyperandrogen levels, so high levels of the androgens, which are testosterone, that they'll have some issues with ovulation, so a dysregulation of their ovarian function, and then that also they'll have um, the polycystic ovaries themselves. For many women, including Rachel, it's the threat of infertility that's the most concerning. I was upset because I knew that it was linked to fertility and I really want children, so that was hard to get my head around. Um, and I just felt like just this overwhelming thing of like, oh, I can't even do the one thing that we're meant to do. And like, I'm just so like not normal. And, you know, I didn't know how common it was or anything like that. And I just felt like there's something wrong with me. <laughs> What I think is helping change the awareness and the communication is probably also the infertility side of things. So when a female who has PCOS is interested in conceiving and is unable to, I feel like in a lot of people's minds that might be a more legitimate path. Treatment for PCOS is limited to managing specific symptoms, like infertility or weight gain. One of the main treatments is increased exercise and a strict diet. The best things to like manage the symptoms of having PCOS is just uh, diet and exercise. So when I first found out, I did some a lot of Googling, which is quite a bad idea because there's a lot of misinformation about it. Um, and I joined like this insane diet where I couldn't eat gluten, wheat, like soy, sugar, um, like literally everything but then I went and saw a naturopath like a specialist naturopath and she re-sorted out all my diets so that was good so now I just eat like low GI foods um, and no sugar and things like that and then I have to exercise a lot because um, exercise helps like with the androgens. Rachel believes that an earlier diagnosis would have helped her manage her condition and its symptoms. I'm from a small town and just the doctors, um, maybe they just are used to young girls going in there just getting the pill and that's like a routine for them. I think that like what would help is education when we're young, like sex ed is terrible in Australian schools and I think that you know knowing that these types of hormonal conditions that affect your lifestyle and your fertility and everything, your emotional well-being, like your mental health, they need to be talked about and edu like we need to be educated on them from a young age and not just PCOS, like all the other conditions as well. Like